Hello everyone, welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, as we know, we had several new laws go into effect. Compliments of your state legislature and attorney general. Yes, those laws went into effect July 1st of this year. Now, there was a lot of changes made to RCW, and in particular, RCW 9.41.010, which is the definitional section of our firearms code. So today we're going to have to spend a few minutes talking to you guys about all the new definitions you need to become familiar with. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today is House Bill 1705 and the effects that it has on you, the lawful and responsible gun owner. Predominantly today what we're talking about is some new uh, added definitions and amended definitions in RCW 9.41.010. Now, for those of you who've been geeking out on this channel for a while, we know the importance of 9.41.010. 9.41.010 is the definitional section of our firearms code. So as we begin to change the definitions of things, what we do is we change the application of the law. We can therefore expand the scope of the law. We can expand the number of people or activities that fall under the restriction of that law. By constricting the definitions, of course, we can free up activities to be free of legislative control. Now, this is the state of Washington. Our governor is Jay Inslee. Our attorney general is Bob Ferguson. So anytime we're going to see a definition of laws under this current legislative and political environment, we are going to see an expansion of those rights, an expansion of those definitions, ensuring that more lawful and otherwise responsible activity falls under the purview of state law. Okay, now we're going to be doing another video about the effects on untraceable firearms from the passage of 1705 and the implementation. But you're going to begin to see that in some of these definitions, this is getting to issues that 1705 addresses, which is primarily untraceable firearms. Now, the very first new definition found in RCW 9.41.010 is a subsection 2, a new subsection 2, which is a new definition of assemble. Assemble now is defined as, assemble means to fit together component parts. Okay, so there you go. But you'll see now in some of the other activities described that we're talking about manufacturing, causing to be manufacturing, assembling, and stuff like that. Once again, expanding the scope of definitions to bring more activity under the purview of law. In addition to adding a definition of assemble, the state legislature has redefined the term for federal firearms licensee, federal firearms license importer, and so forth. That is found in new subsections 9 through 11 of 941.010. Now, under subsections 9, 10, and 11, the following definitions apply. 9, federal firearms dealer means a licensed dealer as defined in 18 U.S.C. section 921A11. 10. Federal firearms importer means a licensed importer is defined in 18 U.S.C. section 921A9. 11. Federal firearms manufacturer means a licensed manufacturer is defined in 18 U.S.C. section 921A10. And we will put the links for all of those uh, federal statutes down below so you can check the definitions. But essentially, the definition of licensor, manufacturer, and importer now are consistent with that which is held in federal law. Now, perhaps one of the biggest additions, thanks to House Bill 1705, the 941.010, is new subsection 16A and B. That deals with frames and receivers. Never before in Washington law have we defined frame and receiver. We now have done so effective July 1st of this year. Under the newly amended 941.010, frame or receiver is defined as... Frame or receiver means a part of a firearm that, when the complete firearm is assembled, is visible from the exterior and provides housing or a structure designed to hold or integrate one or more fire control components, even if pins or other attachments are required to connect the fire control components. Any such part identified with a serial number shall be presumed, absent an official determination by the ATF or other reliable evidence, to the contrary, to be a frame or receiver. 
okay? And then we have a new definition under 16b for fire control component because we have not heard that terminology before. So what exactly is a fire control component? Well, 941010 defines it as, for purposes of this subsection, fire control component means a component necessary for the firearm to initiate, complete, or continue the firing sequence, including any of the following. Hammer, bolt, bolt carrier, breech block, cylinder, trigger mechanism, firing pin, striker, or slide rails. So you can see that is a very expansive definition now about what frame and receiver means. So as you can see, there is a much greater expansion in the definition of frame or receiver to bring many more components under the purview of state law. Now, in addition to defining frame and receiver, there is a new subsection, a 39A, and then there's some subcomponents, which now defines unfinished frames or receivers. Under the newly amended 39A of 941.010, an unfinished frame or receiver is defined as, unfinished frame or receiver means a frame or receiver that is partially complete, disassembled, or inoperable that, one, has reached the stage in manufacture where it may readily be completed, assembled, converted, or restored to a functional state, or two, is marketed or sold to the public to become or be used as the frame or receiver of a functional firearm once finished or completed, including without limitation products marketed or sold to the public as an 80% frame or receiver or unfinished frame or receiver. And of course, they talk about a frame which readily may be completed. So what exactly does that mean? Do we go to the Webster's def dictionary definition of readily? No, don't worry. Your legislature has come up with a definition. Readily now is defined as readily means a process that is fairly or reasonably efficient, quick and easy, but not necessarily the most efficient, speedy or easy process. Factors relevant in making this determination with no single one controlling include the following. A, the time, how long it takes to finish the process. B, ease, i.e., how difficult is it to do so. C, expertise, i.e., what knowledge and skills are required. D, equipment, i.e., what tools are required. E, availability, i.e., whether additional parts are required and how easily they can be obtained. F, expense, i.e., how much does it cost. G, scope, i.e., the extent to which the subject of the process must be changed to finish it. And H, feasibility, whether the process would damage or destroy the subject of the process or cause it to malfunction. That, my friends, is a mouthful. That is found in newly amended 941.010, subsection 39AI. And then just for good measures, under 39A2, the legislature has defined partially complete as partially complete as it modifies frame or receiver means a forging, casting, printing, extrusion, machine body, or similar article that has reached the stage in manufacture where it is clearly identifiable as an unfinished component part of a firearm. So as you can see now, all of the 80% lowers, unfinished frames and receivers that we were dealing with are now being considered by Washington law, effective July 1st, to be a frame or receiver. Now, of course, if it is a frame or receiver, you have to fill out a 4473, you have to go through all the background checks required, and of course, it has to have a serial number. And in addition to all of this, the state legislature has expanded the scope of the definition of manufacture. Why? Because again, they wanna bring more activities under the purview of state control. Manufacture, under the newly amended subsection 25 of 941.010, now reads as follows. Manufacture means, with respect to a firearm, the fabrication, making, formation, production, or construction of a firearm by manual labor or by machinery. So, yeah, you know, simply pinning the upper to the lower, dropping the bolt carrier group and the charging handle in there, that is considered the manufacturing of a firearm. Now, there is one really important definition, and we're going to talk about this more in the other video we're doing about 1705, but this is really important. Because when we're talking about untraceable firearms, are we talking about every single completed firearm that does not have a serial number? No, we are not. You see, the definition of untraceable firearm was changed by 1705, but very important components of it were not. The definition of untraceable firearm is now found in the newly amended 941.010 subsection 41. Pay careful attention because this is how untraceable firearms are defined by Washington law. Untraceable firearm means any firearm manufactured after July 1st, 2019 
that is not an antique firearm and that cannot be traced by law enforcement by means of a serial number affixed to the firearm by a federal firearms manufacturer, importer, or dealer in compliance with all federal laws and regulations. So this is really important. When we talk about regulating untraceable firearms, we are talking about any completed untraceable firearm that was manufactured after July 1st, 2019. If it was manufactured before July 1st, 2019, well, then this law does not apply. Now, how does the ATF or local law enforcement establish when the uh, firearm was actually manufactured? Well, that's their problem, isn't it? Um, it's not ours. There's nothing in here that requires us to establish the proper ownership or provenance of that particular firearm. Listen, we're going to put a link down below to uh, 941010 so you can check out all the new definitions for yourself. We will be doing another video on the effects of 1705 as it relates to actual untraceable firearms. In the meantime, if you have any questions about these definitions or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, remember, you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember... Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.